Welcome to ICCA Live, World Class Culinary Online. Today we bring to you our second webinar in the series Cooking with U.S. Beef. And this time we will have Chef Sergio Freitas share valuable insights on the best cooking methods to use on the brisket. And of course, he will show us some nice, well-presented recipes too in the process. This educational webinar is brought to you by the U.S. Meat Export Pro Federation, USMEF, a nonprofit trade association working to create new opportunities and developing existing international markets for U.S. red meat, including U.S. beef. Headquartered in Denver, USMEF has a worldwide network of offices and is represented in the GCC region by the Arab Marketing and Finance Incorporated, AMFIC. I do know that Chef Sergio needs no introduction. However, if you are here for the first time, he is a chef instructor at the ICCA in Dubai, joined our faculty three years ago, and before that worked extensively in the food industry in South Africa for over 14 years before moving to Dubai. Without much ado, let's go over to Chef Sergio in his kitchen. Over to you, Sergio. Thank you, Shanaz, for that introduction. And welcome once again to the US Beef and ICCA Live webinar. So, welcome. My name is Chef Sergio, and this is my lovely assistant, Chef Shri. Um, actually, my colleague, Chef Shri. Um, and today we got a very exciting educational webinar with U.S. Beef Brisket. Yeah, um, I'm going to be showing you a whole bunch of different techniques from trimming, cooking methods, the chef tips, what to do, what don't to do. The whole show is here all about brisket. So let's get started with what do you need to know about U.S. Beef? So U.S. Beef predominantly comes from cattle that have received a a grain-fed diet consisting mainly of corn. A corn finishing is what helps give U.S. beef more marbling and is why it is more tender and juicy than grass-fed beef from other countries. Now, grain feeding also affects the flavor of the fat compared to grass beef, right, which is great. And then obviously what is also nice is the food safety system in the USA involves several agencies of federal government, packaging companies, and um, producers who all work together to ensure that U.S. beef is safe and wholesome, yep. right? And another great one is obviously U.S. beef is halal, yeah? So let's go on to the carcass. Beef brisket is one of nine primal cuts, yeah? Brisket is from the breast or lower chest of the beef, okay? As cattle don't have collarbones, these muscles support around 60% of the body weight of standing or moving cattle. Yeah, so brisket is made of two muscles. You're gonna have the point and you're gonna have the flat. We'll talk more about this once I actually get into it. You're gonna hear those words a lot today. Point and flat. Right, so let's get started. Once again, we've got a beautiful piece of brisket in front of us. Once again, once I actually want to go and buy a piece of brisket, the first thing I want to realize in a supermarket is, where is my brisket in the fridge? Is it at the back? Is it in the front? Is the fridge actually at the correct temperature? So you want it at least five degrees Celsius. But once you buy it, how are you going to store it? Store it straight away. As soon as you get home, pop it into your fridge. Easy. If it goes into the freezer and you're going to use it later down the line in a week's time, you're going to want to thaw the beef. Right, so what's the correct way to thaw? Right. Do not thaw at room temperature, firstly. <laughs> um, what you want to do is take the beef out, put it in a tray, pop it in the fridge 24 hours before, and let it thaw from minus 18 degrees to a good 5 degrees yeah. Celsius, right? And you want to have a tray right underneath it because just say there is a little hole in the packet or anything, some juices, yeah. some of the water from, you know, the beef can drip down. And you want to put it at the lower shelf of your fridge. Right, you don't want to put it on top and then have some beautiful cooked rice or curry or salad or something, and all those juices drip into, drip into your 
nice cooked food and you're going to have contaminated food. All right, you may also put it under running water. I'm not such a big fan for sustainability reasons, you know, using lots and lots of gallons and liters of water to thaw a piece of meat. Um, if you're really in a hurry, I guess you can actually put this in the microwave. Or don't. All right, just store it the correct way. You know, do your prep a day before and you shall be fine. So, um, what we're going to be doing now, I am going to open it up. All right. Just open it up there. Make sure that when you cut the package, you don't cut the packet like that because you can actually cut into the fat. So, just take your finger and you're just going to want to run the knife nice and down. Just like a nice sharp knife. But be careful, there is going to be a little bit of blood coming out from it. Up we go. Help me over there, Shri, just so the blood doesn't go everywhere. Oh, get a good grip. This is kind of a big piece of meat. There we are. Perfect. Right. So, now, a lot of people, a lot of friends of mine even, um, I've done a lot of brisket in my life coming from South Africa, and a lot of people who have bought the brisket, and then I'm actually showing them how to do it, um, they're like, oh, look, my piece of brisket got so much fat on it. Fat is great. You want fat on top of your brisket, right? So the first thing I like to do is just give it a little pack dry, right? Um, can you use some paper towel, get in there, pat it dry all the way around. Don't be shy. Here they've actually taken a piece off, which I'll actually explain to you a little bit later. Right, I'm gonna turn this bad boy over. Oh, there we are. Oh, absolutely stunning. Beautiful piece of brisket we have here today from US Beef. Thank you very much, guys. Absolutely divine. Just pass me another paper towel there. Yep, there we are. Just go one little last pat down. Great, all the way around. Great, and then Shri, I'm going to pick this up and you're just going to actually just wipe my chopping board for me quickly. Thank you, Shri. Bum. Right, so what I like to do, obviously, let me actually go into one more thing. So once again, remember I told you about the flat and the point. Right, so the point is actually... They're moving him from the, they're removing his ear, earbud and moving him onto the laptop so he, the sound has a better reception. Every time we put him on the earbud, it seems to cause static. Are we back up? We are back and rolling. Right, so we've patted down our briskets. Fantastic. Now, once again, you're going to hear the two words, point and flat. So, the point is predominantly over here. This is the point, right? You have a fat cap, which over there, I'll just turn the little bit. You can see they call it a fat cap because it's a bit chunky piece of fat, right? That's a fat cap, which will trim up a little bit. And then obviously it goes on to the flat. Now today, I'm gonna go more of a backyard kind of Texas style um, trimming, all right? I'm not going to go competition trimming. I'll explain that a little bit more once I actually get into that. Now, obviously, this is going to take me a few minutes to actually trim everything nicely as to how I want it. So while we do this, we're going to go into a whole bunch of things. We're going to go into different cultures. Yep. Um, I'll tell you about the different cuts, the connecting tissues, yep. all of it, yeah? Yep. From the fat cap to... Um, the points to what you can use it for, how to cut it. I'll tell you everything about what you need to know as I start trimming it. So what I like to do, firstly, I always like to start, every pit master out there has its way, right? I've got mad respect for all these pit masters out there. They really are artists in their trade, right? So we all have our own little style of doing it. My style is I like to start over on this side. Now on this side, you're gonna see a lot of this like our fillet last week, a lot of silver skin, which I'm going to want to remove. Okay, so I'm just going to jump in there straight away. Get in there. There's going to be a lot of fat. Now, don't worry about this fat, guys. I mean, you're going to see how much you'll lose out of a brisket like this. Predominantly, you're going to be losing at least 10 to 15 percent of its fat, you know, which is kind of a lot. So, you don't really necessarily need to be 
exactly get all just the fat. You can take a little bit of meat away yeah. because at the end you can actually use some of this fat and meat to actually make once again ground beef for a lovely burger or you can make some sausages really up to you what you want to do and the rest of the fat that you'll actually have um, don't throw it away that we like to call in the industry as a little bit of liquid gold yeah. right so you actually um, adds flavor to so many dishes exactly so you render down that fat all right and then you can add it to so many different things Use that rather than using vegetable oil, yeah. ghee, you know, add that to potatoes, fry your steaks in there. Absolutely divine. And when steaks are paired with like mash and things, you can always add a fat or something. It ties exactly. it so beautifully. Exactly, yeah. Chef. So you can see I'm just getting in there. All right. I'm gonna remove a lot of pit masters out there. They like to remove everything. Mm -hmm. Some don't like to remove yeah. much. All right. I remove as what I feel I want to remove, yeah. right? Like I said, um, sometimes they go into competition cuts. Mm -hmm. Right now, competition cuts, they're gonna to wanna to round off all the edges and only get a beautiful a perfect piece, rectangle. perfect rectangle piece, yeah. and um, nice, just so when it comes out the smoker, mm -hmm. or any way that they prepared it, most majority smoking, um, they can get nice uniform sizes oh, of, of slices, exactly. So, but today we go in that traditional yeah. backyard style, so right? Meat for us. Exactly. So, of course, as you have your brisket, you may actually fry your brisket or sous vide your brisket or smoke your brisket yeah. whole. So everything actually on there. Today, I'm actually going to be taking the point off the flat, right? And we're going to use it. Because today, I'm actually going to be doing three different cooking methods. I'm going to be doing a sous vide. I'm going to be doing a braise. And I'm going to be doing a smoked out of one piece, right? Which is going to be great. Yep. So I'll get into that a little bit more. So now that is looking pretty cleaned up. I'm not going to go more into it. If you wanted to go more, you can level it out yeah. and all of it. But no need to really. Right, so now I'm going to turn it over, all right, and now there is quite a bit of fat on here, some sides a little bit more than others, right, what I like to do is I actually just like to trim just the edges off, not too much, don't waste too much meat, just trim it off, all right, just so that I can actually see how much fat is actually in there? Can you see that? Before I put it and actually see. It's literally the fat cap. Exactly. You know, so now I can actually see, okay, where am I in my brisket? Yeah. So if I keep going, I can see, ooh, I still got plenty of fat there, still plenty of fat. And now you can actually see how much fat is all the way there. So I like to trim my brisket all the way, not wasting or anything. I mean, once again, that's just a nice big piece of fat over there, which is going to happen. Right, slice it up. Go all the way around, I'll turn it over this way, just so you can see over here. Obviously, I just want to get in there. Slice it up. Great. And now you can actually see how much fat is yeah. actually in there and how much fat you actually want to trim away. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, they say pretty much half an inch. Yeah. It's like one point. One, one to two centimeters. One to two centimeters around. Up to you, you don't want to take all the fat off, right? The reason you don't want to take all the fats off is because this is what's actually going to seal in the juices as well, make it nice and tender, and yeah, you just don't and want fat to. Is just is fat good. is good. I mean, I guess you know it's not that good, but um, it's good. <laughs> I won't complain about fat. Yeah. So I've trimmed it now. Now I can decide. Okay, how much fat do I actually want to take off? Now over on this side, this is actually called the fat vein, mm -hmm. which over from this side, I'll start taking away, all right? This fat you actually want to take away, this is what's actually binding the two muscles together, yeah. which some of this fat, you can't actually even render it down. Mm -hmm. So that you can actually throw sure. away. So let's turn it over over there. Now, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start trimming most of this fat away and I'm going to leave at least a centimeter and a half yeah. all the way. Yeah. So. Obviously, once again, that is a fat cap, so lots of fat over there. So I'll start, obviously, over there. Now, talking about different knives, um, I like to use a good bony knife. 
A good sharp knife is always great help, right? You don't have to take all this fat off in one go. Do it in pieces, do it in stages. It's not a race, right? Do it as how you feel comfortable, right? It's a lot. And make sure to be safe. Uh, being definitely, safe, yeah. thank you, Shree. Yeah. Definitely be safe. Because if you're using a real sharp knife, yeah. it can easily slip. Look at that, it's all fat. Yeah. All right, and if you start slicing and you start seeing some meat, that means you've gone a little bit too far. Stop. Press pause. All right, so I'll start taking some of that off. All right, and then obviously it starts fatter over here and it starts going thinner in fat. As you can even see over on that side, it starts having a very little fat. That's why I like trimming it. So you can see, but over on this side, if you go too deep, I've stood that, right? You can start seeing a little bit of meat there and you don't want that. So keep trimming, keep trimming. Don't worry, keep trimming. Right. So lots of connecting tissues into here. Um, whoops, you see, if that happens, you know you've gone a little bit too far. Yeah. Stop yourself. Right. And since we're doing it in small bits, we didn't make too much of a mistake. Oh yeah, no, I mean, yeah. if, if it comes off, like I said, I'm not doing a competition cut. Yeah. I'm literally just doing a home style, home style backyard. backyard. Yeah. So I like leaving quite a bit of fat on, mm -hmm. to be honest, I feel as, you know, all those juices, everything just comes absolutely divine. And it also helps kind of keep in the moisture. Definitely. The you do just want to take a little bit of the layer off it just a bit yeah. see there yeah, i really took a little piece of meat yeah. don't stress don't cry too much about it mm. it's all good yeah. right let me jump in here quickly and yeah. lots of fat all right chop that down a little right so obviously when tenderizing um, it tenderizes mostly when the collagen actually um, gelatinizes. <laughs> nice one. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, so obviously a good cooking method is what actually helps a good brisket mm -hmm. actually cook. Right. So we're almost there. Just a little bit over there. Take that one off. You can actually see how thin it starts getting. So you just got to be ever so careful not to take too much. You do want a good fat coverage over your piece. Right, so now. Sergio, your, mic, your camera has gone off. My camera has gone off. Yeah, we can see, we can hear you, but we cannot see you. They can hear me, but they can't see me. Very nice. <laughs> Sounds like a bit of a riddle. We can see you and we can hear you clearly now. You can see me and hear me now. Right, so <laughs> over here, okay, I've got a beautiful coverage. I'm happy about that. Over here, I'll still take some of that off when we get there. Now over here, I'm going to start separating the point from the flat. Now there's a main fat connective tissue over there. You can see how much fat there is. Literally, you can just like, cut a whole bunch there. Look at that, it's just, you know, pure big, pure fat. So over here now, this is where you start actually cutting away, peeling away, and you just follow it. And you keep following and following. Right, you don't want to hit too much meat. Right, am I going there? Absolutely great. It's getting there. You want to take that big piece of fat. That's what I'm talking about. Even if you're going to be keeping the point and the flat together, you want to remove this piece of fat, all right? Because that is going to be no good. So you can actually start seeing how it's actually going to come off, right? Over here, it starts going over there. So you just want to go and then this meat will be separated. So we're going to keep slicing down. A little, oops, I should have gone over there a little. Let me take that off. Yum. 
Right, get over there, take it off, all connective tissues. Right, now I'm getting there, get in there, get in there, start slicing it. Yes, almost there. Right, you can start seeing how that becomes the flat and that becomes the point. Yeah, so over here, right about over there, I'm going to start actually just cutting it. Cut that away. Right, and we've got a beautiful piece of meat over there. Right, we've got the point, we've got the flat. Now, obviously, don't take too much off there. No, right, so now you just want to clean this up a little. Take this all off, clean it up. Over there. Right, I could have taken a little bit more off there. And please pass me a tray there just to put that there. Thank you. Right, so now you just want to clean this up a little. Right. Great. Now, we've got a whole flat, which is great. Like I said, if you want to go more competition style, you can cut it. All I'm going to do, I'm going to use this piece over here. Great. Okay, just clean that up a little. Clean it up. I'm just going to use this piece for a nice little sous vide. Right, so now I have another flat over here. There's still this little piece of heavy meat, heavy fat, that I just want to take off. Great, and now you got your two pieces. I cut obviously my flat into two, right? And then I've got my point, so I'm happy with that flat which I'll use this for brazing, which will be absolutely divine, right? And then I've got my point, and then I have my other piece, which is my point over here, which now I just want to look at it and just give it a little trim all the way around. Great, make sure that it's all nice and even. Right, if it's nice and even. But like I said, you do want a nice even side to it. Cut it up. I said there's a lot of trimming, yeah? But have fun with the trimming, guys. I mean, over here now you've got a lot of different fats over here, which now you need to actually take this part off as well. Right, cut it off. Nice sharp knife makes all the difference. Right. There is a difference between fat and silver side as well. Right, talking about different cultures yep. in cooking, um, yeah, obviously Texas, big fans of the brisket. Uh, do have one or two friends from Texas as well, and literally, I mean, it just depends on the person how they want to cook it. Exactly. I believe you know sometimes just a little bit of salt and pepper is all you really need yeah. for a good brisket. If you want to make a beautiful rub, go for it. Not a problem. Purely up to you. I'm going to show you today my rub. Um, in Germany, I know they actually like to cook it with dark beer and a few root vegetables. It makes a super lovely um, dish. In Britain, they, you know, they like to make like a pot, like a pot roast. Yeah. You know, nice vegetables in there as well. Um, in the Jewish community, obviously, like Montreal, they like to do it um, pastrami. Exactly. In America, you know, I wish I had another series to this where I could actually show you how to actually brine your meat and then actually turn it into pastrami or turn it into corned beef. Yeah. It's Lovely. Even, it's even really popular in Asian cuisine actually. Yeah, so you're actually the master in um, some Asian cuisine. So so what, what dishes do they make in Asia? So um, in Hong Kong, they introduce it in a lot of noodle soups. Noodle soups. And I think when uh, we talk about Vietnamese cuisine, the first synonymous um, dish that comes to mind is pho soup. Okay. And obviously brisket is the cut used for pho soup. Okay. Um, in Thai, we... Uh, 
cuisine really close to my heart. Um, we have a dish called Sir Rang Hai. So Rang Hai. Okay. <laughs> so um, that dish actually literally translates to crying tiger. Crying tiger. That's so interesting. So they're creative uh, in terms of flavor as well as naming things. Cool. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, uses for brisket all around the world and definitely in Asia as well. Okay, I'm more into my European kind of country. So I mean, even in um, Italy, they got something called the Bolito Mistro, which is actually a whole bunch of different offcuts and like tongue and oxtail, and they take um, brisket and they add it in there. And the stew is actually only as good as your stock that you make. So I was actually speaking to Matilda about the chef Matilda, yeah. and she's obviously from North Italy. So she was telling me about you know. This dish, and she's like very particular, like it has to be done way. like this, and it has to be served with uh, salsa verde, yeah. which is great. So, you know, I'm still gonna actually try it. I told her that she should invite me one day, and we will definitely make that. So, now I've got a beautiful point, all right. So, a lot of people like to use the point and the flank for different things. I actually like to use the point more for even my smoking, I find it is the tenderest of the two. Mm -hmm. All right, so today I'm going to use the point um, for my smoking. Right, I'm going to use the smaller cut of the flank of the flat for my sous vide, and then the bigger one we're going to make a nice, nice, beautiful braids. Okay, so those are the three cuts over there. Um, we are going to start getting prepping on our dishes. So, like I said, we're going to be making three different kinds of methods, right? I could sit in front of you guys literally for an hour or two, maybe even three, um, telling you all about different methods of cookery that you could do with brisket, from broiling to boiling to roasting to sous vide to smoking, right? There's so many different types of methods um, out there. But today, I feel these are maybe the most three popular at the moment. So, we're going to do it. I'm going to show you my techniques of doing it as well and also explain to you different other techniques that you could actually do. Nice one, Sri. So, always clean as you go um, when cooking. Right, so let's get started. We are going to start on the, what shall we start? The sous vide. Let's start on the sous vide. So, let's cover right close. So, now I've got obviously my. Um, my flat, one small side, I'll just cut it a little bit there, you don't need to cut it up. The only reason why I'm actually cutting mine up today is because I've got small sous vide bags. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to pop it in there and we will just sous vide it. So, I mean sous vide, the art and science on sous vide, I could do a whole series on webinars just on sous vide. It's become so popular in the world at the moment, especially in restaurants and you know, it's really, really cooked. You don't lose any nutrients on it. Um, I feel it's a slow cooking technique. More if you, flavor. More flavor, nothing gets lost. Yeah. So if you do, once you start sous vide, do a little bit of research, go onto Amazon, start off with a basic home, yeah, little home device, kit. a little home kit, yeah. buy yourself a recipe book and start sous vide stuff from the basic broccoli to, you know, the basic yeah. and then start getting into it. I mean, you can do so much with sous vide at the moment. Literally, yeah. you could even make chocolate brownie sous vide, <laughs> believe it or not, but even custard, yeah. hollandaise, yeah. everything sous vide. So what you're gonna do, please pass me a vacuum bag. All I'm gonna do now for my sous vide, literally, you don't need to do much with sous vide, all right? A little salt, a little pepper, all right? I'm using a little bit of smoked salt on it today, all right? Um, Traditionally, salt and pepper is all you really need. I'm literally just going to sous vide it another style, all right? Um, very basic flavors because when we're done, you'll see a reason behind my madness, all right? I want the sous vide to bring out the most flavor in this piece of meat. Yeah. So I don't want to infuse it with too much flavor. I want you, the gear, well, us to taste the natural beef taste, yeah? So, what I'm going to do, I've got that, I've got my sous vide bag, right, I'm going to take my sous vide, my piece of meat, I'm going to throw it in my bag, up we go, up we there, I should have folded that a little bit, and now you see why that can go away, why I actually 
cuts it a little bit smaller, the flats, just so it can fit in my bag, right? And then we're just going to throw a piece of rosemary in there, boom. We're going to throw a little piece of thyme in there, boom. We're going to throw a little some garlic in there, right? Throw some garlic in there. And that's about it, right? If you really want to go a little bit more extreme, flip it over, take another piece of rosemary, stick it in. I actually forgot, I actually, in the recipe, it actually says a bay leaf as well. Right? I've got to actually add a bay leaf in here. But it's all good, you don't need it. And that's all you actually need. Now, you will need a vacuum pack machine, vacuum seal it 100%, and then you're gonna need a sous vide machine. Now, behind me over here, I've actually got a sous vide machine. I actually switched it off, all right? Um, you're gonna to wanna to set it to 60 degrees Celsius, okay? And you are going to sous vide this for up to 48 hours, 50 hours even better, yeah? 60 degrees, pop it in there. Only thing you need to worry about is just the water level, right? And just make sure that the water level doesn't drop but purely safe even if you're doing that at home. If you want to do the whole brisket, maybe get your butcher to actually take the, um, the brisket and actually vacuum seal it for you. If you don't have a big professional vacuum machine like this, um, this is a shout out to Amanda. She actually sent me what she did one day. She had literally two home devices. She took a cooler box, filled it up with water, put one on each end and off she went to in this huge piece of meat and it worked. Wow. So, I mean, it's really up to you. This piece of sous vide here, this will feed two people easily. So this is lovely. So seal it. What I also say is leave it in the bag for at least up to 12 hours, right, before actually throwing it into your sous vide. And you'll be so amazed at how this is going to come out. It will just be so tender. Right, even when you want to take it out, I'll explain a little bit later once you actually see what I've actually done. So, this we shall eat for lunch tomorrow, or actually, let's say Saturday, yeah. because that'll be sous vide for a while. All right, then the next one I'm going to jump onto is going to be our smoked. Okay, so what I've done, right, I have a whole bunch of different spices. I'm just going to pop that over there. A whole bunch of different spices. That this is my rub. So even in the recipe, you're going to see it says Chef Sergio's um, smoke Hi. recipe. <coughs> right. So like I said, when doing the smoking, all you need really, guys, is just salt, pepper, blend it up, put it on as a rub, and off you go. You can get a little bit of liquid smoke if you want. Um, but you don't really necessarily need all of this. But trust me, this recipe is the bomb. When I did it earlier and I was actually shredding the meat for the other special recipe um, dish I got for you guys, I had all my students running up to me. What's this? What's this? People, I had to like literally kick them away from me because just the smell as soon as I opened up the tinfoil was on another level of awesomeness. So, very easy. We're going to start off with some brown sugar. Right, it's going to give some nice caramelization. Right, I've got some smoked paprika. A good smoked paprika is very, very important. Right, got that. You guys do have the recipe. Um, this rub is actually enough for a whole brisket. So it's actually a little bit too much that I've made today for the small piece that I sort of got. Um, but it's fine, we're going to keep it. And I I think I'll order one for myself and cook one up for the boys <laughs> as well. So it's I've got some salt. What I've done here, I've actually got some molten salt and I have this very awesome smoked salt. So I'm going to add that in as well. Some cumin. Some dried parsley. Some um, ginger powder. Yes, there's quite a bit going in here. Some um, coriander spice. Some chili powder, just for a little kick. Don't put too much. This literally, when I say it's a quarter tablespoon, 
it's a quarter tablespoon. Don't go too crazy, it really does come out. Um, I've got some cayenne pepper, perfect. Some oregano, done. And I've got some black pepper. So all of that is in. Thank you, Shri. You may take that away from me. So now that I've got that over there, get yourself a whisk. I know you're not whisking cream or anything, but we are just going to mix all of that rub together. Okay, yummy. Mix it all together. Make sure it all gets on there. Right, almost done. A few little extra ones and we are done. There we are. So now um, I'm going to be taking my point because I enjoy doing my point as the smoking. But all you're going to want to do is just take a handful, start and start rubbing on that spice. Don't be shy. Pop it on there. This is what's going to give all that flavor. Right, um, like I said, I've got a Texas friend who's very, very passionate about her brisket. So she says she's going to try out my recipe. And let's see if I get a thumbs up or not from her. She actually sent me her husband's recipe last night. Yeah. And it was just plain salt, pepper, yeah. a little bit of um, liquid... Um, Gosh, it was like liquid smoke, thank you. Um, yeah, and then she sous vide it. There's many different techniques as well to actually smoking. You can actually um, either sous vide your brisket first and then actually pop it in the smoker. Maybe Great. more tender? A little bit more tender. You can brine it as well and then smoke it, but then it starts turning into a little bit of corned beef and a little bit of pastrami with a little bit yeah. of smoky flavor, which is fantastic, yeah. I won't lie. Right, so what you want to do, you just want to press, 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 drain it off, make sure you get all the corners on there. Right, like I said, I have not done a competition cut, so there is a little bit of unevenness happening in my point, which is absolutely fine. All right, obviously, sometimes on the certain ends of the point, they actually trim it off and then they keep it for bird's ends, which is also something really, really, really delicious. So what you want to do now with this is you want to wrap it up, right? And you actually just want to let it sit in this rub for at least, yeah, 10 to 12 to 24 hours, it's good. Or if you want to cook it straight away, just let it rest for at least 15 to 30 minutes at least. But the longer you leave it, the juicier those juices are all going to be and everything is just going to be absolutely delicious. So obviously um, I've actually made one already. So I have a video of me actually doing it yesterday. Um, there's no voiceover so I'll be speaking as the video actually starts coming up on how I actually smoked it. And then afterwards I'll start giving you a little bit more information on how you can smoke these days. So, um, guys, can I please get the video? <coughs> ah, I see the video is sort of loading. I think the video is halfway through. So, once again, look at that side that I used, right? Yesterday, I actually changed it up. I actually used uh, flats. So, there's my nice piece of flats. I didn't use the points. So I decided to change it up today. So, that is my nice flat side, I just want to show you that you could smoke either piece, right? So you're going to sprinkle your rub exactly as I did, all the way around, pat it down each way, make sure that it is evenly coated, absolutely divine, right? From there, transfer it onto another dish or platter or um, G tray as I did, and you're going to want to wrap it up, and you're going to want to store that away for at least like i said anything if you want to use it straight away 30 minutes at least um, but up to 12 to 16 hours so many ways to smoke which i'm going to go into it today i'm actually going to be using a cycle in our awesome oven right a slow cooking um method so i put it in at 115 degrees celsius 
and my internal temperature with my probe inside the meat, I've put it for 85 degrees Celsius, right? And then you let your oven actually preheat. So now my rub is actually been um, marinated for uh, the past, you know, I, I lie, I maybe did mine for about an hour, to be honest, but it was perfectly fine. And then obviously I've got wood chips and you get a whole bunch of different wood chips, guys, from apple to cherry to hickory to oak, oak to elder to pecan, right? So many different, you can even mix and match a little bit, right? I'm using something today called the Volcano Smoker. So it does look a little bit like a volcano. It's what we use for our ovens, right? Um, and you want to soak your wood chips in water. The reason for that is you don't want to create a flame. You want to create smoke. So you want to actually leave your wood chips in the water for at least, I'm not joking, up to an hour to two hours is even better. And make your charcoal super, super white. Yeah. Then throw your wood chips on top and off you got, you got smoke. Put your meat in a perforated tray so obviously it can stop penetra penetrating from the top. And you want to have your fat side up, right? Once it's in, smoker starts smoking. You know, I see a lot of little flames flying around there, right? It's going to start smoking. It took about um, close to about four hours for it to actually get to the internal temperature that I wanted. Once it was done, um, I took it out. And the best thing you want to do after smoking is literally get some tin foil, aluminum foil, and you want to put that meat in aluminum foil, right? You want to wrap it. You can even wrap it with another tablecloth over it put elastic bands over. I've seen people even put it in um, like cooler boxes mm. so everything stays insulated. And you actually just want to keep that for about two hours resting. And then it's up to you, all right? You can store it. I always find briskets the next day. It's, it's actually better. like a little bit better. It's a little bit like a curry. Mm. Or if you want to eat it on the day, make sure you do rest it, yep. all right? Rest it for about an hour mm. and then throw it back into the oven. Uh, just to reheat it a little just bit. Just to reheat a little bit until the uh, internal temperature gets to about 87 degrees. Yeah. Right? Another way that I'm going to show you today that I actually enjoy doing, I like smoking. I kept it overnight, all sealed up nicely. And then what I did, I decided to throw it into my sous vide machine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just for an extra hour. So when I take it out, it's a little bit more tenderized and it's absolutely going to be the vibe. So it's up to you. What you got to do when it comes to these sort of things, guys, it's a little bit of trial and error. It's about doing some research. It's about, you know, going onto the internet. If you type in brisket on the internet, you're going to get a thousand and one different people yeah. writing there. And basically figuring it out. Figure it out, trial and things. error. See what works for you. It didn't work today, it might work tomorrow. You figured out that, you figured out something else. Eventually after doing it five or six times, trust me, your neighbors are going to be peeping over the wall to see what the hell is that great smell happening and you'll be the pit master of your family, yeah? yeah? yeah. So, on to our next one. So, we've done the sous vide. Very easy, very simple. It's just it's a little bit of time to yeah. actually get it done. We've done our smoking, right? I'll get into more smoking a little bit later, but no, let's actually get into now. Yeah. So, obviously smoking now, guys, there's so many ways that you can smoke. I did it today as we do it in the industry, in the kitchen. Obviously, you know, we also have um, fire, fire sensors, yeah. Yeah. so you can't have a whole bunch of smoke going and the people in the offices complain that I smoke them out. So we did it in the oven. Yeah. Didn't, it smelled great, but yeah. it wasn't that heavy smoking all over the, the business. Um, obviously, you get electrical. I've got one behind me here, the battery smoker. Absolutely divine. Pop it in there. It's easy. Smoking has become so made easy than 20, 30 years ago when it was all about control of your smoke, you know, with your coal and your wood chips. What color is the smoke? If it's too dark, too light, too temperature, you know, is it, you know, you want to actually be smoking anything around from, like I say, 107 to 120 degrees Celsius. You know, take it above, you're going to overcook it. It's going to become dry, like super dark, like charcoal. Um, obviously, you get your electric um, smokers now with the whole electric little gadgets that actually feeds how much smoke you need in there, how much... Um, you can be so precise with more... You can be so precise. That's the lovely thing about it. You can buy yourself a barrel and do it like that yeah. with it underneath. 
So it can be charcoal, it can be wood, it can be electric, it can be convention. Yeah. Now you even get these things, I'm not sure if you've ever seen, um, it's actually like a pallet, mm -hmm. and it's actually like wood chips going around, oh, I haven't seen that. and then you light it that, and it goes like a worm pretty oh. much, and it can actually create smoke for about five hours. Oh, and then hours. you close it within? Close it, oh. and you put it at the bottom of your web or anything, nice. and it just yeah. smokes naturally. Or you can get like a little wood box, pull it up with there, it's got little holes yeah, everywhere. Yeah, so it will penetrate through the holes, the smoke, and you yeah, got it. like that, you know. Or you can buy like a nice big fancy three-in-one barbecue <laughs> or something, it's really up to you. Even in my old business back in South Africa, myself and my partner, we actually made our own smoker out of a fridge, believe it or not. Wow. <laughs> right, old fridge, we cleaned it up, we drilled a hole on top, made a chimney, took everything out, we created our own smoker where we used to smoke pastrami, to corned beef, to chorizo, to smoked chicken, to smoked salmon, I even tried it. Uh, didn't really work out that great. I needed to figure out a few little things because obviously we didn't have like a built-in yeah, yeah, yeah. thermometer. The yeah. So I walked away for a while when I came back. It was a little bit over. I won't lie, but that's the beauty of it. It's yeah. trial and error. And the ingenuity of chefs that never failed to impress because you managed to make a smoker out of a refrigerator. <laughs> exactly. Believe it or not, it works. And this probably still is working today. Mm -hmm. So on to our next one. We're going to go on to a braised dish. Okay. So this one is actually very close to home to me. I love braising things from, you know, oxtail to lamb shanks to very tough pieces of meat. Now, obviously, brisket is very tough. All right, obviously because of where it comes from, it doesn't have the collarbone as mentioned before. So it's tough. It needs a good slow cooking yeah. to actually get there. It needs time to actually tenderize. Right, so let's get started on this tree. Yep. So I've got another beautiful piece of the flat. Um, what tree has, we'll just pop that over here so they can see what ingredients we have. We've got a basic miopoi. Now miopoi is carrots, onions, celery, leeks, garlic. All right, basic, and that's what we're going to start with. So, Shri, you can actually start with that. Okay. All right, so also what I did, I made a little bundle of rosemary, a little bit of thyme, um, some parsley, and a bay leaf. All right, just nice, pop it in there nice and easy. So, the recipe is there for you guys as well. Right, so what Shri is going to start doing now, she is going to start frying off the... Yeah, I actually got a little bit of olive oil. I actually don't like putting olive oil in yeah. it because it becomes a lot fattier. So we're just going to dry it and, you know, all this uh, um, caramelization is going to start. Yeah, and the yeah? water from the vegetables. Exactly. Yeah. So we want that natural taste. I don't want too much oil because mm -hmm. at the end, all that oil floats to the top. And we also got enough fat on you yeah. for it to actually go. Yeah. So we're going to start off with some onions. Okay. Throw that in. Carrots. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you don't even need to do this. You can just mix it all together and pop it in a roasty tray yeah. and you're good to go. Yeah. Some celery. I like putting whole garlic in there, right? Not pieces, right? And Sri is going to start to just actually just saute that up a little bit, give it a little bit of color and some heat on there. It's all good, right? And what I'm going to do while she's doing that now I've got this beautiful piece of flat, which I made it a little bit bigger than my sous vide, just because of the bags. But I'm gonna smoke, throw a little bit of the smoked salt. I'm addicted to the smoked salt for some reason. Um, just a little, right, some. And I guess it just gives a different dimension of smoke. It does, yeah. it does. But also be very careful, it also depends on your stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you don't really wanna be using, I mean, if you don't have bones and you haven't made your own, beef stock and you've got to use, you know, the the cubes, <laughs> yeah. you know, oh, that looks so divine, yeah. it just looks Beautiful. good, good amounts of fat Even on there, yeah. absolutely great, obviously I use my thinner piece of the the flat for my sous vide, mm. right, I've left the chunky, competition cut, they would trim it all up nicely okay. and it would be all great, so I'm using the best part for the braising to be honest, a little bit of salt in there, Right, you don't want to put too much, like I said, don't put too much salt, right? Because just say you are using like um, the ready-made stock cubes, don't make your beef stock too salty, mm -hmm. right? Everything's going to be reducing and reducing and reducing. So and then at the end, you salt. want that sauce. Yeah. All the sauces that we actually have today are made from the actual juices and the actual cooking. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's already smelling. Can you smell that lovely, um, like sugary coming out? Yeah. Yeah. That is the vine. Right. So let me take that away for you. Right. So what else are we going to pop in there? I'm just going to throw in my little, not really a bouquet garni, <laughs> but uh, my little herb sachet. Yeah. Now, what I've got over here, I've got some red wine. Okay. I'm using non-alcoholic red wine today. Right. Not a problem. If you want to use the real thing, go right ahead. Like that. so that's why I don't really want to use olive oil in there. It just yeah. becomes everything. Fat floats on top. Oh, can you it's smell that? That smells so, so good. good. But I give that a little bit of a cook. Right? Just for a minute or so. Yeah. doesn't really matter because it's all going to be cooking together. Yeah, yeah I, I just want to incorporate everything. Just get a little bit of it going. I'm going to add some whole peel tomato. That goes in. Before, even if you want to add a little bit of tomato paste and actually burn it mm, with, the with the vegetables and then add in your red wine, that's and also better. another way. Very great, yeah. very delicious as well. So it's purely up to you and the recipe that you may be following. Yeah. But this recipe really, really works, guys. It's simple, it's easy. It's one, two, three, and you're done. So I've got some beef stock that I'm going to throw in there as well. There's one. And we got two. Right, so at the end of the day, carrot, celery, onion, leeks. I think in my recipe I wrote 100 grams of each. And onions, 200, yeah. Yeah, onions, 200. You always want a little bit more onion in there. Yeah. Um, I put one clove of garlic in there. Uh, one liter of beef stock. beef stock. 400 mils of uh, <laughs> wine. <laughs> And 400 mils of whole peeled tomatoes. tomatoes. So that is done. Great. So you just let that come to a little bit of a boil. All right? Boiling is 100 degrees Celsius. Even if it gets to 95, you are solid, you are good. Right. So she, you can actually put that onto the side already. And then you're going to want to seal this piece of meat off. Right. You don't want to put this meat into that sauce raw. Right. You want it to actually seal and seal in all those juices so we're going to put this on super high whoops i think the gloves don't <laughs> gloves are on yeah. so this we actually might need a little bit of um, oil yeah. or what i would even prefer literally is actually um taking some of the fat that i had from the carcass rendering that down all right and that's is like liquid gold using the fat of the beef to actually sear my meat and you're going to see a huge huge advantage right so she is coming with the oil now we're not going to be putting too much oil normally the would actually prefer just to dry fry it and start off with the fat right and just let it all actually just start rendering down right but if you look at that beautiful piece of meat over there you can see not too much fat left on, but just enough. Right, so let's throw some oil on there. Oh, um, not too much. That's more than enough. Now, nice non-stick pan. This might make a little bit of smoke, but you want to hear that. Uh, beautiful. Right, three, that may go. Right, I'm going to whip off my gloves now. And... Give the table a little bit of a clean. I'm a little bit. Let's pump it up. Yeah. Right. So, as soon as this is done, I'm going to take, you need a good, either a GA tray, a roasting tray, something a little bit deep. All right. And you're going to put your meat inside and then you are going to start putting your liquid, your brazen liquid in there. Wrap it up with some tin foil, throw it into the oven at around 160 degrees for up to three hours. Three to three and a half hours, depending on the size and thickness of your brisket. All right, so this is smoking up a little bit. Let me get in there, actually see how that's turning. Ooh, did you see that? That looks so good, right? So, um, I'm gonna maybe turn that over quickly. Oh yeah. That just looks great. 
right? It's going to fit in there. All right, of course, this is going to shrink. Once it's actually in there, believe it or not, guys, this is going to shrink to, I won't say half the size, but three quarters of the size, this is definitely going to shrink. So I've got a beautiful Pyrex dish. Right, this is absolutely stunning. If you get yourself one of these, this is all that you really need. This can go into the oven. Um, you can see through it, which is always lovely. All right, so you can see, oh, do I need to add a little bit more liquid? Is it running out? Etc. So it's always nice to have one of these. Right, so we just pop that over there. So I think we actually could get started on the rest of the stuff, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so the little surprise I had for you today, right, we did brisket three ways. Subi, smoked, and braised. Today I'm going to do a traditional one that you see all over the world, which is sliders. Right, so I'm going to make a trio of sliders using all three different cooking methods, right, um, and, oh, that's looking divine, three different cooking methods, so you can actually taste the difference of all three cooking methods and different flavor, right, and that's just going to be absolutely awesome. This is getting a little smoky now, I just want to sear all the sides off. We keep it there. Right. Let's switch that off. Right. So is this gonna fit, Sri? That's right. Oh my it's god, is it gonna fit? It, it fits. Back. It yeah. fits. It fits. Right. So even we actually made a mistake actually. I should have put a little bit of my veg at the bottom, mm -hmm. which that's what I'm gonna do. Oh. If you do something, do it right, guys. Yeah. So we'll just pop that there just to get that there. I've got a spider over there Shree. Right, so I'm going to bring my veg over. Great, spiders over there. Thank you. I'm going to take a little bit of my veg. Right, you can see that. I'm going to pop it down. Yum. Pop it down. That looks good. That's about enough. Right, now I'm going to take this big piece of it and I'm going to, how did I have it in that, like, like that? that? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, of course I could have cut it just a little tinier, but it's, it's fine, shrink. it's going to shrink. Right, so now that's over there. I'm going to take some more of my lovely veg. I'm going to start throwing that on top. Oh, I think this is actually a perfect size for it. Mm -hmm. And it smells so good. <laughs> it does smell really good, right? Yeah. So, I think this is most probably going to someone's home today. Yeah. And they're definitely going to make it and they're going to have some fun with it. Or I uh, might just keep it here and we eat it for lunch. Really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you just want to put your braising liquid in there. Right, up it goes, up it goes. It should be pretty much there. I don't want to make a mess. Be careful. You could always just put it into a jug. Right? Oh, that is looking divine. Is it going to make it? Is it going to make it? You do want it to cover it just a little. Right? It's almost like this awesome. recipe was made for this. Oh, wow. Look at that. Perfect. Actually, boom. Exactly perfect. Divine. Now, it's not going to overboil, guaranteed. I'm going to be popping it in the oven at 160 degrees for Three and a half to four hours. You'll have to just come check on it, cheat when no one's looking, take a little corner, have a little taste, see how it is. All right. Now you could always cover it with some tin foil yeah. if you don't have such a nice one like this. Not a problem. Pop it on. Whoops. Oh, Sergio, I make a mess. So anyway, we'll just yeah. cover it because now I know how much I should not put that extra last little forty mils. But that is good. Just like that is absolutely fantastic. Pop that over there, right? And that goes into the oven at literally 160 degrees for three and a half to four hours. Apologies for that. I uh, was a little bit too cocky and confident that it would close and I make a boo boo. But it's all good. I got a chip. Let's clean that up. Right, so that is the brazing. Super easy, right? Now, let's get on to our plating. 
So, table is nice and clean now. I'll give another little wipe down in a second. We'll just clear this all up. And now, what we're going to start with, we are going to start with our sliders. Yeah? Um, I do have a lot of people waiting for this moment. Right? They want my sliders. They want my needs. I'm going to have to fight off a few people. Right? So, I think that's good. Let me actually just give it a little spray. Cool. Right. There we are. I'm ready. So, Shri, do you want to get started on it? Yeah. You can get started on it with it ready. Um, just as Chef Sergio mentioned before, uh, the three types of beef we have here, which we made in three different cooking methods. Yep. So, yeah. so obviously, you can actually see three different colors now on it. Uh, maybe that one. That one's a little bit darker, if you can see on the screen. Um, but definitely, we have our braised. braised, right? Super delicious, great flavor. We have our sous vide, which is still nice and pinkish in the morning, um, in the middle, but it was so tender. It literally just melted like butter in your mouth. And then we got our smoked, which was great. Now, with the braised, once I cooked it and I felt that my steak was perfect, I took it out, I took my meat and I put it one side. I strained all my vegetables yeah. from my sauce. I took that sauce, put it back in a pot, reduced it, right? Yeah. There might be a little bit of fat that comes up on top, just skim it away, not a problem. And then I returned that back into it. Mm -hmm. And then you can even just keep it warm in the oven at you know 90 degrees yeah. until you actually want to serve it. Don't just take out the meat, leave it one side. It could, you've got a big chance of it drying out. So let it all actually soak, soak up. It. So I took a little bit, once I actually shredded my meat, I took a little bit of that sauce, I threw a little bit on top of it. So now it's nice and juicy. The same with the sous vide. Once I take it out the, the sous vide, you're going to see there's going to be some liquid left over. Reduce yes. it, exactly the same. Yep. A beautiful flavor from all that meat has been kept in. Threw it over the meat, done. With the smoked, mm -hmm. all right, I went more of that, you know, Texan kind of style. So it had so much flavor already. All I did, I actually just took a little bit of beef stock. I took a little bit of a barbecue sauce. I would suggest make your own rather than buy yeah. one. But it's fine. You can use one. It's just I found it a little bit too salty, quite strong. Mm -hmm. So maybe look up how to make a traditional barbecue sauce. Yeah. Reduce it a little bit and add, you know, a tablespoon in just to coat it, it up a little bit. Yeah. And it actually becomes totally divine. So... We got our meat, we got our beautiful sliders. I'm gonna be putting on gloves, so Shri, you can actually start building these bad boys. Can you see that? That's over there. You can start building that while I put on my gloves quickly. So, what we're gonna be doing, she's gonna be making three different sliders, right? So I've also got compliments that's gonna go with it. So Shri's starting with the smoked first, right? I believe that when you actually do the, this one away is that fine right so I believe when you actually do a slider there's no need to pop mayonnaise on there or horseradish or something on the bread all right if you made a good brisket and it's absolutely you know juicy and all of it you don't want to make your bread soggy it's yeah. the last thing you want to do so all the flavor is in there and you want that little bit of different texture okay. where once you bite into that slider you know, you want to get that juiciness, the crunchiness, yeah. right? So we've gone for the smoked and we've gone just with a traditional coleslaw, nothing yeah, special, so cool. carrots, cabbage, yeah. mayo. mayo, homemade mayo, obviously a fan favorite for chefs. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's all you really need. Once you bite into this bad boy, you are going to be craving another. And what's better is you start over there. You move on to the next one and it just gets better and better with flavor all from the same cut of meat so right of course even you always like any meat you always want to rest your meat okay so same with brisket if it comes out the oven or it comes out the smoker or if it comes out the sous vide you want to rest your meat definitely right so the next one she is going to be doing i decided to go a little bit of a natural Right, because when I did the sous vide, I went for a natural flavor, right? Um, so I want our experience to be here 
natural. So I'm making like a sous vide brisket burger, all right? Plain Roman lettuce at the bottom, a little bit of um, tomato, go for it. A little bit of gherkins just for a little bit of a saltiness to get in there. And then this beautiful, natural, tasting brisket from the sous vide, right? So it's not masked by, you know, um, all, the powdering sauces. all the powdering sauces, all the powders or spices or anything. This is a pure, natural tasting brisket, which is actually so divine. Yeah. Right, so that is our second one. That looks absolutely amazing. I love it. Right, and what I've done as well, I've made a little bit of um, fried onions that we're just going to top that up just a little bit on there. And we've got a beautiful little slider. That's a winner right there. Gosh, I think I want that one. So that one can go on. Whoops, Sergio. Pop that on. Pop a little American flag on there. Great. And then on to our last one, Shri. Yeah. So we're going for a braised. Um, a braised dish now, this to me is more like a sloppy joe, mm -hmm. right? Because it's got that, that braising liquid on it. It's kind of rich, you know, so it's like that sloppy joeiness of it. So all we're going to do here, we're just going to go with our braised meat, which is so, it is pumped with flavor. Yeah. Um, pretty much, I would say, can compete to the smoked flavor, really. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know, each to their own on what flavor you're sort of looking for. Um, but this is absolutely a winner to me. What we're going to top it off with over here, would you like a spoon tree? A little bit of a spoon there. Okay, and cheese is going to be putting, I made a little bit of a salsa, all right, with a little bit of tomato and um, onion, some with corn. some corn, some chives, some parsley. I'm just going to throw that on there just for a little bit of freshness and crunchiness to it, yeah? Don't need to put a lot, I just masked it with a little bit of mayonnaise, and that is all you really need. Bang. We close that up, and I promise you, this served in a restaurant, yeah. you are going to be <laughs> really making a lot of people envious or wanting to order the same. So that is my take on a trio of sliders, right? Um, I think it's absolutely divine. You start wherever you want, take a bite of each as you go down, but guaranteed you're going to finish this place. Right. So... That is our sliders. I'm just going to pop that over there. Perfect. Okay. So let's move that over there. Actually, I need a little bit of that just to wipe down. So now let's go on to our slicing. So what a lot of people have been waiting for. Shri, may I please just get the uh, brown chopping board and the blue mat, please? Right. So actually, we were supposed to put the slider shri on, on a black yeah. plate. So that was just for us to assemble on. So we're going to make it even yummier now and more attractive. Wow, that black already just makes it pop. I think that's already right there with some chips over there, with some French fries, maybe a double take on it, some sweet potato fries, yeah. and some, you know, um, potato buns even, yeah, yeah. that could even be even delicious, yeah. right? So, so many different varieties you can do with this. Play around, look for recipes. Right, so, on to my next one. Shri, um, if I can just get the compliments for the yes. plates, and then we will start. Yeah. Right, so, um, and then I'm gonna need you to pass me my plate over there as well. So, where we will start, now I have my smoked and I have my sous vide that I'm taking out the water, right? It is off. If you want to switch it on, it was a little bit noisy. As you can hear, so I've got a very hungry tummy, right? So obviously at the moment it was just resting at a good 42 degrees. So that is perfect. Right, so that was it actually resting for me. Right, so what I did with my smoked, it's wrapped in tin foil, I vacuum packed up, and I just put it into the smoker just for a little bit, just to warm up. Right, so let's start with our sous vide. Now you can see the sous vide after literally 40 hours of actually cooking, there's liquid in there. 
It's soft. It's delicious. It's just so much juices in there. Yep. Now, this is the juices I'm talking about. Don't discard this. This is packed with so much flavor from the thyme, the parsley, I mean, the bay leaf, all of it. So, what you want to do, please put that bowl over there. Pop the bowl in there, right? You want to keep all those juices, right? Take that out. Look at that beautiful piece of meat. I've got to be careful so it doesn't just... I mean, if there is a little bit of rosemary or thyme stuck to it, you can try to take as much as you can possible off it. But you know what? It's just, if it's in there, it's in there. Not a problem. You eat it with it and you're going to enjoy it. Right. Perfect. So that's my sous vide piece. Now, you've got to look at the grain of the meat. All right. And you always want to slice against the grain. So I can see my grain is running. That way, let's rather turn it that way. So my grain is running like that. So I'm going to slice it like that. You always want to slice against. So, um, Shri, yep. while I slice maybe, yep. you can actually start putting what we're going to do for this one. We'll do pretty much the same. Okay. For the sous vide, we're going to go a natural potato salad. Right, so I made a, a very basic potato salad over here. Okay. Nice Macedon potatoes, um, a little salt, a little pepper, a little bit of onion, spring onion, parsley. Yeah. Um, I think that's absolutely divine. So all we, our plan here is we're going to go a little bit of potato salad, okay. one meat, another compliment, one yeah. meat, one it's meat, good. done. So you may start popping that over there while I start slicing this. So I'm going to take that little off-cut piece over there and look at that. Nice and beautiful pink, right? Even top view, if there is a top view over there. Oh, it's still nice, it's juicy. Even if I have to take this one and I just do that, that is just already good for pretty much shredding, yeah? This is definitely for the boys to eat. I'm just gonna pop that right over there. I'll discard of it now. Can see all of them staring. <laughs> They're staring. I actually saw a few students staring through the window in there earlier on. So you want a nice sharp knife, one slice, two slice. I'm going to be kind and I'm going to go nice three slice. Nice, thin, thick, it's really up to you, but nice little thin slices are great. Right, fan that out a little bit, just under the potato salad. And that is the first one looking absolutely wow, scrumptious. Right, so let's take this over here. I'll just pop this meat over here. Right, uh, let me just clean up here. I know we're starting to run out of a little bit of time, I think. I've always got over time because I just carry on speaking and speaking. But don't blame me, I just want to teach you guys. And I want to share with all of you the most out of possible. Right, so I think we'll keep this one for last. You may take, actually we'll do this one because that one might be a little bit saucy. So this is my smoked now. Don't necessarily need to put it back in a sous vide machine. You might not have one. But wrap it up in tin foil as I did. And then, you know, preheat your, please pop that in a bit for me. Preheat your, um, your oven and make sure that the smoking Right, look at all that flavor there. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Right, so obviously I took a little piece off already. There's the grain going like that, so I cut it across. I took a little piece off already because I wanted to make my um, sliders. Yeah, so obviously this was nice and beautiful, but obviously it went back to go cooking. So I'm gonna take the first slice off just so you can see a new side to it, right? Look, that's one of our pieces. Then you can actually see it over there. Nice, beautifully sliced. Right, now always make sure when you're slicing meat, your hand that you're slicing with should be dry, right? You don't want your knife to actually slip while you are cutting. Right, so I'm gonna do three nice slices now of my smoked. Right, look at that, um, the husk, the bark of the meat, absolutely divine, yeah. right, it's packed with flavor. So three nice slices of that, 
a little bit longer, they'll be super happy with that in the restaurant, right? Just gonna fan it out, pop that on top. Yeah, could have had just a little bit more coleslaw over there. It's all good. That one can just be on the next one. Let's try to go a little bit higher so we can get a little bit more height. Right. So now, um, may you give me the yeah. the braising, and then I'll cut the braising. You can continue with that. Right. So now we'll move on to our braising. Which the braising is over here. Oh. Now that's how the braising eventually starts to look, right? It's covered, I kept it in the juices, right? I also took a little bit out, so when even you slice it, you can just take some of that off. Oh, it hasn't solidified, it hasn't done anything. Super soft, even if I take that piece there, which I'll break some up, right? Pop that on the tray. Gosh, I'm just making a lovely mess here, but it's a tasty mess. Shree, do you mind just giving me some paper towel just so I can dry my hand, please? Just my one hand. Just want to dry it off. I'm a little bit weird about that. And there we are. Okay. So now I'm going to slice the final one. I should not have done that over there. Number one. Got to be super careful. Nice, sharp knife. Get into there. Number two, oh, this is just breaking up on me. That's how beautifully cooked it is. Right, and I'll get that last one on three. I think even two slices, I'm being quite generous, right? And once again, even if I take just a piece over there and I do this, look how that just breaks up. Just literally, so tender. So tender, like butter just breaks up. So you can imagine, it might look dry, but it's far, far dry. Right, so before even you slice it up, you may also brush it mm -hmm. with maybe a little bit of sauce, but, oh, look at that, it just wants to pull apart because mm -hmm. we cut it correctly. Mm -hmm. So we've got three beautiful slides with three beautiful, let's pop that over there, right? Take this, pop that over there, and let's just take my gloves off. Right, so sometimes it might look like it's a little bit dry, but it's far from dry. This is so juicy, and obviously it's up to you. You want to warm it up a little bit before you slice it, or on the day um, you want to actually slice it just before, and you'll be perfect. So I'm just going to pop a little bit. It's not about the garnish, guys, especially when it comes to this dish. It's literally just about the meat and the sides. Right, can be served with so many different sides. You want to go traditional baked beans and cornbread, all of that. Yep, that just becomes something a little bit different. So, Shri, do you want to bring us our sauces? So, now we've got our beautiful three trio of sliced meat. That's going to go with our sauces. So, obviously, this sauce over here, as you remember, that was from the sous vide. Right, so that be eaten with that. Then we got our beautiful braised sauce, which will be that one on the left. And then over here, I took a little bit of beef stock and a um, little bit of barbecue sauce, which I made. And you start putting it over a little bit, a little bit of a drizzle on each. And wow, you're going to be smiling for days. So that is that plate, absolutely divine. I'll push that in the forward. That is our show for today. But before that, US beef, of course, we want to know about the nutritional value. So, nutritional value, do you know any of them? Obviously, vitamin B6, B12, you got some zinc in there, some selenium, some um, phosphorus, yeah, some phosphorus, riboflavin, iron. iron. <laughs> <laughs> so many, so many great nutritional factors when eating great meat. Yeah. Right, so thank you very much once again to all my viewers for joining myself and Chef Shri on, you know, um, our journey through brisket. Our journey through brisket, yeah. I'd love to do some more and um, different cuts of meat, maybe do brisket again, but yeah. all the different ways that we can do it. And thank you very much for joining in. Join us next time as well. And look after yourselves and God bless. Over to you, Mishnaz. Thank you, Sergio. Can you hear me, Sergio? I can hear you, ma'am. Awesome.
That's good. Thank you, Sergio. Both your webinars have been so much fun and informative. Our viewers have really enjoyed watching you. Once again, a big thank you to US Meat Export Federation for giving us and our viewers in the Middle East and elsewhere this amazing opportunity to learn. To our viewers, thank you for attending the webinar, for being so interactive, and we will be back soon with more. So do stay tuned. US beef is freely available, as I said, online in supermarkets. And for our Horeca traders, do contact us and we will put you in touch with the right suppliers. The recipes have been shared with you and will also come to you in the replay. Do try them out and tag us at usmef.me usmef.me and at icca dubai bye bye for now and look forward to seeing you again very soon